In the realm of rocket science, launching a rocket into orbit poses significant challenges, each type facing its unique hurdles. Expendable rockets contend with the complexities of the launch phase, while reusable rockets, notably SpaceX's colossal Starship, face daunting obstacles during landing. However, SpaceX recently proposed an audacious rocket recovery method to the FAA, aiming to redefine possibilities in spaceflight. Among their boldest innovations is the plan to land the Starship booster on a drone ship at sea. Why did SpaceX opt for this unconventional landing approach? How will they execute it, and what are the anticipated benefits and challenges? Join us today on Alpha Tech as we delve into these groundbreaking developments. We all likely remember that at the beginning of June, the FAA released an environmental impact statement concerning Starship at the LC-39A launch site in Florida. This statement was more than just a step towards obtaining an operational license for the Starship system at the U.S. Rocket Launch Center. It offered a sneak peek into SpaceX's ambitious future plans, providing a tangible glimpse of the super-heavy launch system poised to revolutionize humanity. Beyond the bold goals and unintentional revelations in the statement, such as the Starship Super Heavy boasting 35 engines and separate integration and catch towers for Starship, which we've discussed in previous episodes, we turn our focus to the landing of Starship and Super Heavy. The two Starship stages are primarily intended to land on shore, being captured by the launch tower's chopsticks arm. However, the new statement reveals that in the not-too-distant future, SpaceX and Elon Musk plan to recover rockets by landing them on drone ships at sea, similar to the successful reusable landing method they've perfected with Falcon 9. It's quite unbelievable. With the catch tower already built, why would SpaceX need to land Starship at sea? It's a reasonable question, but let's broaden our perspective. SpaceX has set an ambitious target of 44 launches a year, as outlined in the document. With only one pair of towers in Florida, they need to manage at least three Starship launches a month, giving them just 10 days to prepare for each next launch. While everyone hopes for smooth operations, unforeseen challenges are inevitable. As a contingency and to enhance Starship's versatility, opting for drone ship landings is a brilliant and strategic move. In fact, the idea of landing a Starship at sea isn't new. About three years ago, SpaceX explored the concept of landing Super Heavy on a drone ship, much like the Falcon 9 booster. Back then, it was called the Marine Recovery Systems for the Starship Program. A typical launch mission aims to use as little fuel as possible by the time the stage detaches to maximize efficiency. However, ensuring enough fuel for a return trip can be quite costly, not just for the fuel itself, but also for the extra fuel required to carry it. Landing on a barge in the ocean is an economical solution. It's far cheaper to bring the rocket back on a ship than to fly it back with fuel. This way, they can load just enough fuel to deliver the payload and then rely on gravity and gliding for a powered landing on the barge. Imagine launching your rocket 10 times. Instead of paying $100 million per launch, the cost drops down to around $10 million per launch. Now, picture this. Relaunching a hundred times. The cost could plummet to just as little as a million dollars per launch. This dramatic reduction in cost revolutionizes access to space, making it feasible for more businesses and individuals to benefit from space-related technologies. As costs decrease, we could witness companies sending people to the moon, Mars, or even asteroids to mine valuable minerals and water. Saving money on launches opens up possibilities that once seemed like science fiction. Someday soon, we might be buying tickets for vacations on the moon or even relocating to Mars. Of course, the idea of a rocket landing automatically on a tiny pad in the middle of the ocean is incredibly cool. It showcases impressive navigation and helps reduce the strain on increasingly crowded land-based launch pads. Launching from a location where rockets could return to land raises safety concerns. If something goes wrong, even in remote desert areas, 
debris could still pose risks outside the crash zone. Coastal launch sites near the equator are preferred, but if a rocket crashes in the ocean, there is a better chance of recovering it intact. This allows engineers to study the remains and understand what went wrong. On land, the wreckage could likely be more scattered and damaged. Until rockets become as reliable as airliners, launching over the ocean remains the safer option. This diagram effectively illustrates how Falcon 9 lands on a drone ship instead of on land, a method SpaceX could adapt for Starship. However, like everything in engineering, there are challenges involved in implementing this for Starship and its support vehicles. For SpaceX to land Starship on a drone ship at sea, they need to reintroduce landing legs. Previously, Starship had legs, but they were removed to save weight and integrate with the Mechazilla system more effectively. Reintroducing legs poses challenges in weight minimization and refurbishment time, similar to issues encountered with Falcon 9. These are critical considerations SpaceX must address to successfully adapt the drone ship landing method for Starship. Will SpaceX take this route? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. In my opinion, they won't. Instead of altering the rocket's design, they could modify the design of the drones, which would be more beneficial than compromising the rocket's weight. Remember, SpaceX also had to eliminate components like hot staging to reduce the weight of Super Heavy during the fourth Starship launch. Although redesigning the drone ship might be easier, it wouldn't be quick. Super Heavy and Starship are much larger than Falcon 9, so SpaceX can't use a drone ship similar to Falcon 9's for Starship landings. It's difficult, but not impossible. SpaceX could use modified oil rigs to handle the immense power of Starship. Alongside these challenges, many believe that landing and recovering massive rockets at sea is difficult, risky, and time-consuming. This would also make a rapid turnaround for the next launch inefficient. SpaceX would need time to bring the rocket back to the launch pad, reducing the turnaround frequency of Starship. But when SpaceX is serious about establishing a base on Mars, they will launch hundreds of starships and possibly thousands of fuel-carrying ships into orbit over an extended period. Super Heavy needs to ensure readiness to immediately launch a new starship. However, as long as at-sea recovery costs less than a few million dollars, certain launch profiles could be drastically simplified and end up cheaper by the occasional at-sea booster landing. Furthermore, if SpaceX has multiple prototypes of Super Heavy that can be launched consecutively, the time for transporting and maintaining the Super Heavy back from the sea will not significantly impact SpaceX's launch rhythm. Landing on a drone ship isn't the only exciting option. SpaceX and the FAA have introduced additional methods. The FAA has designated that both the Super Heavy Booster and Starship can land at LC-39A, the same launch pad they take off from using the incredible Mechazilla arm to catch them mid-air. SpaceX aims to achieve this ambitious goal, starting with the upcoming Flight 5. It's expected that the launch and landing process in Florida Florida will mirror what they've been doing in Texas. Regarding infrastructure, the FAA's statement highlights key elements. The map identifies NASA-approved areas such as the Air Separation Unit, the Deluge Lake, and facilities dedicated to propellant generation and storage. However, the standout feature is the Catch Tower. This revelation indicates that SpaceX will have at least two towers at LC-39A, each serving distinct purposes, one for launches and another for catching stages. Incredible, isn't it? This approach allows SpaceX to continue using the current landing design without landing legs. This method speeds up repairs and refurbishments, reducing turnaround time. Not only is it visually impressive, but it also sets SpaceX apart, as no other organization has achieved this feat. Landing with the Mechazilla arm promises to capture global attention, potentially beginning with Flight 5, expected late next month. In addition to the two previously mentioned methods, the FAA has outlined another option called Expendable, meaning Super Heavy and Starship wouldn't be reused, but would instead land in the Atlantic Ocean. The FAA's statement includes mapped areas with specific distances and latitudes for these landings. However, this method is certainly not ideal, rather it serves as a contingency plan for special cases. 
Regardless of the chosen method, SpaceX faces several tasks ahead. Bringing the massive rocket to Florida involves close collaboration with the FAA and various organizations to finalize the environmental impact statement. Following the draft EIS, they will gather public comments, making necessary revisions, finalize the official EIS, and move toward critical decisions. Mastering landings is also crucial. The next challenge will be Flight 5, paving the way for catching the Super Heavy with the Mechazilla arm. Only after achieving this milestone will SpaceX consider implementing it in Florida or switching to drone ship landings. It's a daunting task, but nothing is impossible. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.